This is BBC One, and at six o'clock, the news with Jane Hill. Hello, good evening. Welcome to BBC News, where in the last few moments we've received breaking news from Buckingham Palace, which has announced that the King has been diagnosed with cancer. Let me bring you that statement from Buckingham Palace in full. During the King's recent hospital procedure for benign prostate enlargement, a separate issue of concern was noted. Subsequent diagnostic tests have identified a form of cancer. His Majesty has today commenced a schedule of regular treatments, during which time he's been advised by doctors to postpone public-facing duties. Throughout this period, His Majesty will continue to undertake state business and official paperwork as usual. The King is grateful to his medical team for their swift intervention, which was made possible thanks to his recent hospital procedure. He remains wholly positive about his treatment, and looks forward to returning to full public duty as soon as possible. And that statement concludes by saying that His Majesty has chosen to share his diagnosis to prevent speculation and in the hope that it may assist public understanding for all those around the world who are affected by cancer. Well, that statement just through from the palace in the last few moments. Our royal correspondent, Daniela Relf, is here with me. And that note of optimism within that statement, Daniela, but nonetheless, a huge shock. Yeah, on a personal level, clearly for the King, for the Queen and for the wider royal family, this will be a shock. Coming so early on, just 17 months into his reign, he is now facing such a serious health challenge. It was exactly a week ago today, this afternoon, that I was outside the hospital watching as the King left. Uh, he'd been there for three nights being treated for that benign prostate condition. He was actually on reflection in hospital a little longer than we had anticipated. We thought he would perhaps be out after one or two nights, but he stayed in for the whole weekend for three nights. And we now know that it was during that stay in hospital that this cancer was discovered. A secondary condition was found and that's when it was spotted. So uh, clearly a, a difficult period of time now for the King and the wider royal family. He'll be stepping back from all of his royal duties, bar some of the admin of royalty. He'll be able to deal with the red boxes. We're told that he will carry on hopefully having his audience with the Prime Minister each week and also taking part in the Privy Council meetings. But he is going to step back. We are going to see more of the Prince of Wales, his son William, and of his wife, Queen Camilla. They will be picking up some of his duties. But for now, he is going to focus on his treatment and his recuperation, that treatment that started today. Yes, and, and, and just a a slightly further thought about the positivity because we saw him with the Queen very, very recently, walking around, waving, waving to the crowds, waving to the cameras. That's right. We saw the King yesterday on his Sandringham estate in Norfolk. Uh, we, he was on his feet walking to church from the main house at Sandringham up to the main church, Mary Magdalene Church. That in itself is around a 10 minute walk. So he was well enough to do that. Uh, we saw him there with the Queen. He saw the photographers. He waved as he saw them. But he came back to London today to start his treatment for that cancer. And in terms of the workload, uh, you mentioned some royal duties will pass uh, to, to Queen Camilla and to his son, uh, to the heir, and of course, uh, health issues with the Princess of Wales as well. So another element of the royal family also dealing with an awful lot on the health front. Yeah, this has been a tricky month for the royal family. There's no getting away from that. Uh, Prince William had scaled back his own diary to help look after his wife while she was in hospital. And now that she's back home in Windsor recuperating, uh, we are due to see him for the first time since the 11th of January. This Wednesday, he's carrying out two engagements. That's the first time we've seen him since his wife was unwell. But clearly going forward with both his wife and his father now out of the picture, he is going to have to pick up some of those royal engagements. All right, Daniela, I know you'll stay with us. Our health editor, Hugh Pym, is with me. Uh, scant details, of course, as we would expect, Hugh, but that, that note of optimism and that interesting, striking last sentence of the statement from the palace in the last few minutes, that awareness on the part of the king that people around the world deal with cancer every day, and he is now one of those. Well, indeed, Jane, all we know is that the King came down from Sandringham to London today and began his treatment as an outpatient. We don't know precisely where. And according to the palace, he continues to be at home in London this evening. Now, we don't know what form of treatment 
this involves. We know it's not prostate cancer. It was discovered in the course of treatment for his benign prostate enlargement, and prostate cancer was ruled out at the time, and it's been ruled out now, according to the palace, but we don't know what form of cancer it is, and it's still not uh, entirely clear how it was discovered. Was it through scans or some other form of examination in the course of that treatment for his prostate condition? And yes, uh, according to the palace, the king remains wholly positive about his treatment, and he's chosen to make his diagnosis public uh, because he was very keen uh, that the public should know because he is a patron of cancer charities and he certainly believes in as much information as possible because when his prostate condition was reported, the NHS reported a considerable number of extra calls coming through to various helplines with others just taking on board what potential risks they may have. Yes, and... We have just passed World Cancer Day and, and the NHS was uh, grateful putting out all those details about the awareness raising that came from the king being so open about what we are told is a, was, a, was a benign treatment and, and something that millions of men get and, and was treated very successfully, we are told. Yes, indeed. And I think, I think the point is cancer, the risk does in, uh, increase with age. That is a known fact. And... Certainly awareness is very, very important. Any uh, cancer specialist will tell you that. And certainly what the King has done today with this statement by making it public certainly should raise awareness. Mm. Hugh, thank you for now. Hugh Pym, our health editor. And let's talk to our home editor, Mark Easton, as well, who joins me from outside Buckingham Palace. Uh, we've heard a little, Mark, of uh, now an increased workload for Queen Camilla, uh, among others. Uh, what happens now? What are the, the constitutional implications here, potentially? Well, Jen, there are long-standing protocols to deal with exactly this kind of situation. The King's private secretary, Sir Clive Alderton, will have been in close contact with the Prime Minister's private secretary and the Cabinet secretary, the so-called Golden Triangle, to ensure that the British state does not miss a beat as its head steps back from full-time duties. Now, the palace has said they're not appointing councillors of state. That is what would happen if it was thought that the King was unable to fulfil all his functions. If that were were to be the case, then it would be Queen Camilla, it would be the four next in line of succession, next adults in line of succession, so it would be uh, Prince William, Prince Harry, uh, Prince Andrew and uh, Princess Beatrice, uh, Prince Andrew's uh, elder daughter. Uh, but as I say, the palace is confident they're not going to need councillors of state. He is going to continue, as Daniela was saying, going to be continue doing his red boxes, having his weekly meetings with the Prime Minister. Um, perhaps what uh, many people in the Commonwealth will be wondering is, will he be able to to uh, continue with his royal trips, the planned royal trips to Canada in the spring and to Australia and New Zealand and indeed to Samoa where the Commonwealth Heads of Government Conference is due to take place uh, in the autumn. Uh, we don't know at this stage how long this treatment will take, what kind of impact it's going to have on King Charles. Uh, but as I say, the protocols are all there. Uh, it, the, 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 the palace will be very confident uh, that there will be no damage to, uh, to the British state uh, as the prime, as the as the king uh, undergoes his treatment. All right, Mark, for now, thank you. Mark Easton there at Buckingham Palace. Uh, and if you are just joining us tonight here on BBC News, let me just bring you up to date because that statement came through from Buckingham Palace only in the last few minutes. Uh, and it is significant news that the palace has told us about tonight. The king has been diagnosed with a form of cancer, that is the wording that has been used on the statement, and we do know that his treatment has already begun. It is a form of cancer and a schedule of regular treatments has begun. That is what the palace is saying tonight. And he has been advised by his doctors to postpone any public-facing duties. Uh, just as Mark was reflecting, uh, we are told that state business official paperwork will still be done by the king. He is expecting to carry out those sort of duties as usual, but it is those public facing duties uh, that he is stepping back from for now. Uh, and as you would appreciate, we simply don't know how long that will be the case for, but he will be stepping back. 
uh, and some other senior members of the royal family will be carrying out uh, some of those uh, duties uh, on his behalf while he has that treatment. Well, let's talk to our royal editor, Nicholas Witchell, who joins me tonight from Hong Kong. And uh, Nick, this is absolutely a surprise and a shock. Yes, Jane, I think uh, that encapsulates it. This is a huge shock. We know that he was in hospital for the treatment for the benign prostate condition last week. And it was, as we've been reporting, it was during that uh, procedure that uh, surgeons found evidence of a cancer. Now, the outlook, we are told, is positive. It's been caught early. Treatment will begin immediately. But nonetheless, uh, people will be learning this news around the United Kingdom, around the Commonwealth, around the world. And people, I think, will be very shocked. Um, it will reverberate uh, uh, as people uh, learn this news and reflect that it is, as Daniela was saying, it's 17 months now since he uh, inherited the throne. He succeeded to the throne after the death of his late mother, our longest reigning monarch. Nine months since that coronation at Westminster Abbey, the transition to this new reign had gone more smoothly, I think, than many people, than perhaps most people had imagined. There have been the family issues with which we are all familiar, but the transition to Charles's destiny, his destiny as Prince of Wales, for which he had waited all his life, had gone very smoothly. He'd begun foreign visits. There, had, uh, there was, of course, a, a full program of public-facing engagements for the months ahead. Um, we contemplate, we remember that he was, of course, the longest-serving Prince of Wales. He waited decade after decade, uh, loyal to his late mother, the oldest heir to the throne to come to the throne in British history. Now, uh, uh, we reflect on the positive aspects of all of this. He is a fit man for his age. He eats well, he keeps fit. He is known to have a considerable personal and physical resilience. That will be tested, not just for him, but for the British royal family, which one imagines will now come together around him to support the functions of the monarchy, to support him as he steps back from public duties, but continue with the, the, the work of the head of state. But it will be a testing time, of course, for him. It is a considerable shock for anyone, never mind your position, to be told that you have cancer. But we are told by Buckingham Palace that uh, there are these positive aspects, uh, and we are told by Buckingham Palace that the outlook is a positive one. Yes, and Nick, just a, a brief additional thought about the pressures uh, this may place on particularly senior members of the royal family in, in the coming weeks and months, uh, because uh, some of this will fall to Prince William, of course, but we know that he's been caring for his own wife, who's had uh, considerable surgery and we know is, is not going to be undertaking any public duties of her own until at least Easter. It increases the pressure on... on uh... Prince William, very, very considerably. As you say, he is uh, looking after his own wife who has uh, encountered her own uh, serious health problems, who is recuperating from that abdominal surgery. It is a British royal family which is depleted at the moment. Now, without, uh, certainly in terms of the public role, without the king, without King Charles, with an heir to the throne whose priority, well, he must balance his priorities now to his recuperating wife, but to the additional workload that he must face with his father, uh, at least uh, having to retire from the public duties uh, as, as monarch. But of course, there are other members of the family who will be stepping up, the Princess Royal, the Duke of Edinburgh. Uh, they uh, are busy working members of the royal family, so they will be sharing the load in terms of investitures, in terms of other functions which uh, uh, would normally fall to the king. Uh, but the family will come together, clearly, as any family in a situation such as this will, to support the person who requires that support. And at this time, that person is the king. Nicholas Witchell, thank you. 
And just to remind you, if you are just joining us, of the news that has come from Buckingham, Buckingham Palace just in the last uh, 15, 20 minutes or so, the news that the King has been diagnosed with a form of cancer, that is the wording that is being used, and that His Majesty has today begun a schedule of regular treatments. And as we've been reflecting there with Nick Witchell, will be stepping back on the advice of his doctors from any public-facing commitments. Uh, let's turn Turn to our political editor Chris Mason. He joins me from uh, Belfast because uh, because of events in Stormont, of course, over the last few days. Uh, Chris, uh, what reaction uh, from the Prime Minister, I assume, and others? The constitutional role of a monarch is both public and private, isn't it? And we've heard about him stepping back, the King, from some public roles for the time being. But a crucial private role is the interaction between the King and the government. And we're told tonight that throughout this period, His Majesty will continue to undertake state business and official paperwork as usual. He will continue to receive what are known uh, as his red boxes. These are the interactions between a monarch and government. To give you an example, when a new law is passed in Parliament, it goes to the monarch, to the king, for what is known as uh, royal assent. So there is a constant flow of paperwork back and forward uh, between the palace and uh, government, and we're told that that will continue. And as Mark Easton was telling us just a couple of minutes ago, there are no plans to appoint councillors of state. These are officials who can take on uh, the role of a monarch. Uh, that is not going to happen. It's also my understanding, Jane, uh, that the king will continue his weekly audiences with the Prime Minister. Uh, the two of them meet weekly face to face. That will continue uh, with a provision for them to happen remotely uh, if that were to be necessary. I'm also told that the Prime Minister had been informed uh, of uh, the diagnosis and the news that we're bringing you this evening uh, in advance of it becoming public. Uh, let me tell you a, a few uh, uh, bits of reaction from political figures tonight. Obviously a huge amount of surprise and indeed shock. Uh, the Prime Minister in just the last few minutes saying, I wish His Majesty a full and speedy recovery. I have no doubt he'll be back to full strength in no time and I know the whole country uh, will be wishing him well. I can bring you a few other um, uh, lines of reaction as well from senior politicians. Keir Starmer, the Labour leader, on behalf of the Labour Party, he writes, I wish His Majesty all the very best uh, for his recovery. We look forward to seeing him back to swift full uh, health. Uh, the Speaker of the House of Commons, just a few minutes after this news became public uh, at six o'clock, expressed the sympathies of all MPs uh, on the floor of the House of Commons. And we have heard too uh, from the First Ministers of Scotland and Wales. Plenty more political reaction you'd expect uh, in the coming hours. Chris, thank you. Chris Mason there in Belfast for us tonight. And let's just uh, talk a little bit more to our royal correspondent, Daniela Relf, uh, because uh, I know you have more information, Daniela, in terms of other family members, uh, what they know. Dif this is a difficult time for any family. On a human level, on a personal level, a cancer diagnosis is difficult for the whole family. Yeah, I think that's the thing to remember here. This is both a personal and a, a public issue that Buckingham Palace is now trying to deal with. And I think actually in terms of the amount of information we've been given, it's quite a lot. Um, you know, in, in the past, when senior members of the royal family have had to have any kind of treatment or even been in hospital, we've been told very little. This is different this time. Although there has been a warning from Buckingham Palace that they would like the King to be afforded the privacy to have his treatment when he's going to hospital as an outpatient. They have asked that people don't photograph or report that happening. In addition, in terms of how members of the family were told about the King's condition, we've been told that he told his sons, that's William and Harry, personally what was going on as he did his siblings, that's Anne, Andrew and Edward. He told them personally too about his condition and what was happening. Mm. And, and worth reiterating, I think, those, the, the, those moments of optimism, despite the difficulty of a diagnosis, uh, whoever it is, uh, stressing, I think, that statement, you get the sense that they're trying to stress that there is, there is optimism and they are being as, as upbeat as, as one can be in the circumstances. Yes, privately, 
definitely optimism in terms of his treatment. That started today. Looking forward to getting back to public duties as soon as possible. Constitutionally, again, I don't think Buckingham Palace want this to be in any way viewed as a constitutional crisis. Uh, they don't believe that there are going to have to be any of these councillors of state to take over any of the king's duties. He can do as much as he can of the admin of royalty from home and other members of the royal family will step up in terms of getting out and about on public engagements. Yes, and, and again, uh, we mentioned it earlier, but I think it's, it's worth referencing that, that very final sentence in the statement, that, uh, cognizant that people around the country, around the world, deal with cancer every single day, and that the king is aware of this and, and wants to people to talk about this and to, to have some awareness raising around all of this. That's right. Although we don't know what kind of cancer he, ha he mm. has, and Buckingham Palace have been very clear that they don't want that discussed and they are not going to tell us publicly what that is, that the King does recognise that he is now a member of a cancer community and he wants to make sure that he is as open and is happy to discuss it as much as he feels comfortable. Yes. Daniela, again, for now, thank you very much. Our Royal Correspondent, uh, Daniela Ralph. Well, let me just remind you of that statement that came from Buckingham Palace in the last hour. During the King's recent hospital procedure for benign prostate enlargement, a separate issue of concern was noted. Subsequent diagnostic tests have identified a form of cancer. His Majesty has today commenced a schedule of regular treatments, during which time he's been advised by doctors to postpone public-facing duties. Throughout this period, His Majesty will continue to undertake state business and official paperwork as usual. The King is grateful to his medical team for their swift intervention, which was made possible thanks to his recent hospital procedure. He remains wholly positive about his treatment and looks forward to returning to full public duty as soon as possible. His Majesty has chosen to share his diagnosis to prevent speculation and in the hope that it may assist public understanding for all those around the world who are affected by cancer. Let's return to our political editor, Chris Mason, in Belfast. Uh, and uh, you were explaining some of the, the, the key figures in politics who've been reacting to this news. Bring us right up to date with uh, what this means constitutionally, how this affects day-to-day uh, -day activities in, in Westminster and beyond. As I mentioned, Jane, there is that constant interaction. It's the very nature of how our state is defined and is wired, that constant in inter interaction between uh, Buckingham Palace uh, and uh, the government, between uh, Downing Street uh, and the palace, and between different government departments uh, as well. So it's the spine of the state. Now, as we were reflecting, uh, Buckingham Palace making it clear uh, that much of those duties will continue uh, to be performed uh, by the King, particularly seeing the Prime Minister regularly and reading those red boxes, that paperwork that constantly flows uh, between uh, the government and the palace. Let me though bring you a little of the uh, reaction that we've had in the last 15 or 20 minutes. As I mentioned, within a moment or two of this news becoming public at six o'clock, the uh, Speaker of the House of Commons, Sir Lindsay Hoyle uh, was in the chamber and addressed MPs. I wish to make a short statement. I know the whole House will wish to join me in expressing our sympathies with His Majesty the King following the news announcement this evening. Our thoughts are, of course, with His Majesty and his family, and with all wish to send him our very best wishes for the successful treatment and a speed recovery following tonight's news. That's Lindsay Hoyle, the Speaker of the House of Commons in just the last couple of minutes and uh, no doubt we'll hear from plenty more uh, political leaders in the coming hours. I can bring you the reflections of, of a few others actually uh, beyond Westminster uh, around the UK. Humza Youssef, the uh, First Minister of Scotland, uh, saying this evening, my thoughts and prayers are with His Majesty the King. Uh, I wish him the very best for a speedy recovery and a return to public life. Uh, my thoughts are also with 
Her Majesty. And uh, Mark Drakeford as well, the uh, First Minister uh, of Wales, uh, writing uh, on social media that I'm saddened to hear the news uh, that uh, His Majesty King Charles III is facing further health challenges. My thoughts and those of people across Wales will be with him and his family uh, this evening. I send my very best, wish best wishes as he starts treatment for a full and swift recovery. So reflections there from Cardiff and from Edinburgh and from the House of Commons. Chris, thank you, Chris Mason. And let's return to Nicholas Witchell, who joins me from Hong Kong tonight. And again, your thoughts, uh, Nick, about uh, this coming really relatively recently after the coronation, after the king acceded to the throne. I think, Jane, that we're already hearing in these first public statements from public figures from around the United Kingdom uh, in coming hours from around Europe, from around the world, the sense of shock, the, the sense of sympathy for him and the family, and I imagine the, the, the sense of support for the institution, for the monarchy, coping with the, this further medical difficulty coming, as you say, just 17 months after the death of such a long-lived and greatly revered monarch as uh, the late Queen. As Daniela was saying, I think it's striking how much information Buckingham Palace is giving. This is clearly what the King wants. Uh, it is clearly easier to be open with information in as far as they have, given, as we are told, that the prognosis would appear to be a positive one, that this cancer has been caught early uh, and the King himself, we're told, is wholly positive about the situation, the predicament uh, in which he finds himself. Uh, we don't know what kind of cancer and Buckingham Palace is clearly not going to share that degree of information. Um, there are no constitutional implications because there is no question of uh, him being incapacitated. Uh, the kind of treatment that uh, one imagines he will be receiving does not require an incapacitation, so uh, he is able to continue. Uh, we are reliably informed by Buckingham Palace with the duties of head of state. Um, Nonetheless, as we have been saying, this will be a very considerable shock, not just to him, anyone learning that they have cancer uh, will have to go through just a process of accepting and adjusting and coming to terms with that, as will be the case for his wife, for the Queen, and for the other immediate members of the royal family, who will now step up. Uh, to fulfil those aspects of the public-facing role as head of state, as uh, Buckingham Palace has indicated, while he uh, concentrates on his uh, treatment, on his recovery, and on the uh, the, the red boxes, the uh, the functions that only he, as head of state, insofar as he is able, uh, and there is no reason at this stage to uh, suspect that he's not able to continue with those functions. Um, uh, so that will continue. There is, as I say, no constitutional. Uh, problem with uh, uh, the fact that the king is receiving treatment for cancer. Uh, and we are told that he will return to full public duty as soon as possible. Uh, there is no indication as to whether that will be uh, a matter, well, it, it must be a matter of months, but uh, at this stage, clearly, we have no indication as to how many months that would be. But the whole program of public engagements, of foreign visits, uh, he would have been coming uh, uh, to uh, mark the 80th anniversary of D-Day, for example, in June. Well, uh, it must be uh, unlikely, perhaps, that he will be fit in enough uh, to do that. But all those considerations will now be being studied very carefully by his officials at Buckingham Palace. All the carefully laid plans over recent weeks and months will be having to be reconsidered, shared out to other members of the royal family. And on those other members of the royal family, of course, there is now a, 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 much, a much greater pressure uh, particularly on uh, the Prince of Wales, who, of course, is also dealing with the uh, the recuperation of his own wife, the Princess of Wales, after her surgery. Nick, again, thank you, Nick Witchell. And uh, Nick mentioning the extra duties that will now fall to the Prince of Wales, to Queen Camilla as well, of course, but to Prince William, uh, dealing with his own family illnesses, as Nick was reflecting. Uh, and uh, around all of that, of course, the awareness that the number of senior royals is depleted, of course, since uh, Prince Harry and Meghan moved to 
California. And just in the last few moments, there has been a brief statement through from Prince Harry, the Press Association, saying that Prince Harry has spoken to the king about his cancer diagnosis. The Duke did speak to his father about his diagnosis and he will be travelling to the UK to see His Majesty in the coming days. Now, that is a source uh, close to Prince Harry, we are told, the Press Association reporting that tonight. Our Royal Correspondent, Daniela Ralph, is still here. Uh, your, your thoughts on that very brief statement there? Yeah, interesting to know that Prince Harry is coming over. He was due to be in Canada next week um, ahead of the Invictus Games happening there. He was doing a number of engagements there related to that particular uh, event. So he's clearly going to try and get to London first, it seems, in the coming days. We know that the King uh, spoke to Harry personally and told him about his condition. And we can expect, therefore, to see Harry in London to see his father in the days ahead. Mm. And huge pressure, as, as Nick was somewhat reflecting, but huge pressure on his brother, the, the Prince of Wales dealing with looking after his own family, his wife who is recuperating. They have three small children to think about. And now these additional duties as well, as well as the, the natural family concern that he would have, as anyone would have for any parent who's been diagnosed with cancer. Yeah, he's juggling a number of things now, isn't he? Caring for his wife, supporting her in looking after their three young children and now help, helping his father out publicly and some of those public duties. We know that the Prince of Wales will be taking on some of the King's duties going forward. Uh, Kensington Palace themselves have no official comment at the moment, but we do know that the Prince of Wales is in regular contact with his father. Daniela, again, thank you, of course. Now, we will uh, keep you, of course, uh, fully up to date with anything we hear on that news announced by Buckingham Palace tonight. Uh, but now here on BBC News, we will just briefly try to bring you a look at a few other stories making the news here this evening. And police investigating the attack using corrosives in South London say they've arrested a 22-year-old man on suspicion of assisting an offender. Officers are still looking for Abdul Shakur Ezidi following the attack on a woman and her two young daughters last Wednesday. A man arrested after the death of Esther Martin, who was killed in a dog attack in Jaywick in Essex, has been released on bail. Ashley Warren was arrested on suspicion of dangerous dog offences. Mrs Martin's daughter has claimed that the two animals involved were unregistered XL bully dogs and that her mother had previously raised concerns about them being dangerous and aggressive. The police are yet to confirm the breed of the dogs involved. Rishi Sunak has visited Stormont, as we've touched on, to mark the return of power sharing in Northern Ireland. He met the First Minister Michelle O'Neill and Deputy First Minister Emma Little-Pengeli. Ireland's Prime Minister Leo Varadkar was also there to mark the occasion. Mr Sunak said the return of the Assembly was a cause for optimism, but ministers in Northern Ireland are calling for urgent talks about long-term funding for public services. And those are just uh, the key other stories here tonight on BBC News. But for now, as you would expect, we'll return to the news that is, of course, dominating our bulletin here this evening. Let's return to Nicholas Witchell, our royal editor, who is in Hong Kong tonight. And your thoughts broadly on news that uh, is, of course, a shock on, on both a, a personal and a, and a wider, ish, uh, wider uh, range, uh, Nick. Yeah, and yes. 17 months, a mere 17 months into his reign, just nine months after his coronation in Westminster Abbey, we now have a king who is having to step back from his public duties, and it is now a medical matter. It is now a matter, the responsibility now falls to his doctors, to the specialists who will be treating this unidentified cancer, a cancer which we are told has been caught at an early stage. The prognosis, we are told, or the indications from the palace are that uh, they are good. But uh, that is something that uh, will unfold in the coming weeks and perhaps the coming months. But in the meantime, the other members, the other senior members of the British royal family will step forward to fulfil the public-facing functions of the monarchy, I think, uh, as we've already been hearing, there is uh, shock and there is uh, support from political leaders, from others, not just in the United Kingdom, but uh, I'm sure elsewhere in the world uh, uh, to uh, uh, sympathise with 
King Charles facing this uh, personal difficulty, because that, above all, is what it is. But he is a man of resilience. He's a man who keeps himself very fit. Uh, so we must take at face value the uh, statement from Buckingham Palace that the outlook is considered to be a positive one. Nicholas Witchell, thank you. And we will just take a look at the weather prospects with Louise Lear. Thanks, Jane. Well, we've had relentless rain today across parts of Scotland. It's brought some localised minor flooding. Five inches of rainfall has fallen in Highland Scotland, and this is what has been happening. Now, it's drifting its way steadily southwards today, and behind it, we've got some showers tucking in and colder air already arriving. So some icy stretches could be an issue first thing tomorrow. So that rain will sink its way steadily southwards. A real dividing line as we go through the night, miles but breezy down to the south, noticeably cold up further north. So this weather front will be sitting its way out of uh, Northern Ireland into Northern England and across to Wales. We draw a line really from the Bristol Channel over towards Hull. Anywhere south and east of that will be cloudy, will be breezy and milder. It will be crisper with some sunshine, a few wintry showers and noticeably colder in Scotland first thing and into tomorrow afternoon. Now, as we go into Wednesday, that weather front will continue to sink its way steadily south and Wednesday will be a crisper, cleaner, sunnier day for most of us. There'll be some sunshine coming through, a few scattered showers and some of these with elevation will be wintry but these temperatures noticeably down. We're looking at around four to nine degrees, maybe double digits in the southwest as that front lingers. Now that could cause an issue because that front is going to try desperately hard to push its way back further north and on the leading edge of that we could potentially see some snow as it bumps in to that that colder air. So already the Met Office has issued a yellow warning just to be aware that there could be some disruption potentially as we go through the day on Thursday, anywhere from Wales, the Midlands, up into the north of England. Keep watching the forecast. We will, of course, keep you updated. Jane. Louise, thank you very much. And that is the BBC News for now. On the evening that Buckingham Palace announced that the King is being treated for a form of cancer and will be stepping back for the time being from public facing duties. That is all from us for this evening. There'll be much more, of course, on the 10 o'clock news. Time now, though, of course, to join our colleagues for the news wherever you are. Good night.